Okay, so we are going to be practicing going from grams to moles and moles to grams using that bridge of molar mass. So I went ahead and I calculated the molar mass uh, for the compound that we'll be dealing with uh, beforehand just because this is going to be focused on the mechanics of actually using molar mass rather than finding molar mass. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start by translating this English sentence into a math sentence. So remember our question word, how many, gets turned into an X. And then the unit attached to the question word is rewritten. So how many moles becomes X moles. And then we need to specify what kind of moles, so we're going to find the actual compound that we care about. And when we read the question, how many moles are in 63 grams silver chloride, AGCl, the only compound that I mention at all is AGCl. So that's going to go ahead and imply that I'm going to be finding moles of AGCl or moles of silver chloride. So I've translated up until here so far, Rn, that kind of became our equal sign, and then I'm just going to go ahead and use the number given in the problem. So the number that was given in the problem was 63. I have to include the unit, so grams, and the compound attached, so silver chloride. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set up my train tracks. Now I'm ready for a conversion factor that will help me get from grams to moles at this point, but I don't have my conversion factor ready in a format that I can actually use it. So I've already have my molar mass calculated here, and I'm just gonna transform it from this singular one line version of it into a math ready conversion factor. So I'm gonna write it in the two ways that it could possibly be written. I could say for every 143, 0.321 grams of silver chloride, there is one mole of silver chloride. Or I could say for every one mole of silver chloride, there are 143.321 grams of silver chloride. So now I have my two ways that I could possibly use my conversion factor of the molar mass. And now I get to pick which one I want to use. Now remember, we're gonna pick the one that allows me to cancel out the unit I need to cancel. The unit that I need to cancel is gonna be the one that is on top of our train track here. I see that I have grams on top here, which means that I need the conversion factor with grams AGCL on the bottom. That's going to be this lower one. So I'm gonna go ahead and box it since I picked it, and then I'm gonna plug it into my actual train track here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there is one mole of silver chloride in 143.321 grams of silver chloride. Now I see that I have gram silver chloride on both the top and on the bottom, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cancel those. And now the only words that I have left in the entire problem in the math part is mole AGCL, and I'm gonna do a real quick check with myself to make sure that's what I was actually looking for. It is because it's next to that X, so I'm good to go. I have converted to what I need to convert to, which means that I can actually go ahead and start doing the math. Now remember with this train track method, everything that's on the top gets multiplied. So that means that I will go ahead and plug into the calculator. 63 times one. And then we divide by everything that's on the bottom. The only thing that's on the bottom here is that 143.321. And that will give me a big long number there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write out every single number that the calculator gave me, which is 0 0.43957. Now right now I only want two 
decimals. So I'm going to count over one, two. I'm going to look over to see if I need to round up. Nine does make me round up. So I went ahead and I rounded that number. And now my very, very last step is going to be to add the unit. I can't just report this naked number. It's not suitable for public viewing. I need to put uh, some clothes on it. I need to give it a unit. My unit has to match the thing that I said I was looking for. And it should also match what uh, the only English left in your math is. Those two things should be the same, so it shouldn't be a problem. I see next to X moles AGCL, so that means I'm going to put moles of silver chloride as my unit. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to box my answer. And that will be my final answer. Now that's one type of problem that we could see. We could have grams and we need to go to moles, but we could also have moles and need to go to grams. So that's gonna be this second type of problem here. Here I have how many grams are in 3.6 moles of magnesium oxide. I again went ahead and calculated the molar mass of magnesium oxide before. So all we need to do right now is translate this English into math. Again, the question word turns into X. Whatever unit is attached to the question word will get written next to it. So X grams. And then I'm gonna look for the uh, compound that that gram number is gonna be associated with. The question, how many grams are in 3.6 moles of magnesium oxide? Magnesium oxide is the only compound that I mentioned. So that means that it's going to be the one that I care about. And I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to the number that was given in the problem, and that is going to be 3.6 moles of magnesium oxide. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set up my train tracks. Okay, I'm ready to move forward in the map. I have my train track set up, and I'm ready to go from moles to grams, but I need to actually convert those. So I need to turn my molar mass into a conversion factor. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write it the two ways that it could possibly be written. That is going to be 40.304 grams of magnesium oxide for every one mole of magnesium oxide, or for every one mole of magnesium oxide, there are 40.304 grams of magnesium oxide. I need to pick the conversion factor that allows me to cancel moles magnesium oxide, which means I need to find which one has moles of magnesium oxide on the bottom. That's gonna be this top one this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna box it just to let myself know that, hey, that's the one that I picked. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write it here. So that is going to be 40.304 grams magnesium oxide on the top and one mole magnesium oxide on the bottom. Now I see that moles magnesium oxide is on the top and on the bottom. So I went ahead and I canceled it. And now I can go ahead and plug it in. We're going to multiply everything on the top together, so that is that 3.6, which is on top, so is 40.304, and I'm going to divide by everything on the bottom. The only thing that's on the bottom is 1. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug that into the calculator now. So 3.6 times 40.304 divided by 1 gives me the number 145.0944, and I forgot my decimal. I still only want two decimals right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say one, two, that's my second number, and I'm gonna look over to see if I need to round up. Four does not make me round up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rewrite the number as 145.09, 
and I'm gonna give it the correct units. Now remember my units should be the only thing that are uh, that's left as English in my actual setup and it should be the only thing uh, next to X at the front and that would be grams magnesium oxide. So that's gonna be my answer. So I'm gonna box that answer. Okay, let's do another um, example where we're looking for moles. Okay, so this example says how many moles are in 2.3 grams of sodium nitrate. So again, question word turns into X. How many, how many what? Moles, X moles. What's the only compound that's actually in this question? Well, that's sodium nitrate. So I'm gonna say X moles sodium nitrate. And I'm gonna set it equal to the only number that was given in the problem, which was 2.3 grams of sodium nitrate. And I'm gonna set up my train tracks. And again, my molar mass, I pre-calculated it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to write it in the two ways that it could possibly be used. So I'm gonna go ahead and say 84.994 grams of sodium nitrate for every one mole of sodium nitrate or for every one mole of sodium nitrate, there's 84.994 grams sodium nitrate. Okay, so those are my two conversion factors. I'm going to be picking the one that allows me to cancel out grams. That's going to be my bottom one this time, so I'm going to go ahead and box it as it's the one that I've chosen, and I'm going to plug it in. So I'm going to have one mole sodium nitrate at the top and 84.9 94 grams sodium nitrate at the bottom. Gram sodium nitrate is at the top and the bottom of my train track, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cancel that out, leaving me with moles of sodium nitrate, which is what I said that I wanted, so I'm good to go. I can go ahead and do the math necessary. I'm gonna write out the math that I'm plugged into the calculator so that I don't mess up at all. I'm gonna multiply everything that's on the top of my train track, so that's 2.3 and 1. So those are going to be multiplied. I'm going to divide by everything on the bottom, and that's going to be that 84.994 number. So let's go ahead and plug that into the calculator and see what we get. We have 2.3, we're multiplying it by 1, and dividing it by 84.994. That gives us a lovely number of 0 0.027060734. I still only want two uh, decimal places for now, so I'm gonna count over one, two places after the decimal, underline it, look over to my neighbor to see if I need to round up. Seven does make me round up, so I'm gonna go ahead and round up that number. So that number will now become 0 0.03. This naked number needs a unit. Its unit is going to be the thing that I said in the very beginning what I wanted. X moles of sodium nitrate. So I'm going to say 0 0.03 moles sodium nitrate. And since it is my answer, I'm going to go ahead and box it. Last question, guys. How many grams are in 0 0.1 moles of chlorine. Now chlorine is the diatomic element, that's why it's Cl2. I already did the molar mass calculation again, so we're just ready to go ahead and start translating. How many, that's our question word, that gets turned into X. Grams, that's the unit attached to the question word, so we get to put it next to X. X grams, how many grams are in um, 0 0.1 moles chlorine. Chlorine is the only thing that we say in the entire problem that's a compound, so that means I'm looking for grams of chlorine. 
and I'm gonna set it equal to the number given, and that was 0 0.1 moles of chlorine. And I'm gonna set up my train track. Okay, I'm gonna turn this molar mass into a ratio. And so I'm gonna write it both ways. That is 70.906 grams of chlorine for every one mole of chlorine. And it is also, for every one mole of chlorine, 70.906 grams of chlorine. Okay, now I'm just going to pick the one that allows me to cancel out the unit that is currently in my dimensional analysis train track. So I see that I have moles on the top for my uh, setup, which means that I need to cancel out moles and I cancel out moles by having it on the bottom as well. Well, this top option has moles on the bottom, so that will allow me to cancel it, which means that it's the one that I'm going to pick. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug that in to my setup here. And that will now allow me to cancel out moles of chlorine. The only thing that I'm left with in English is grams chlorine. And that's what I stated I wanted at the very beginning. So it looks like we are good to go. Good to plug that into the calculator. Let's go ahead and say what we're going to use in the calculator. Everything that's on the top. So that 0 0.1 is multiplied by 70.906, and we divide by everything on the bottom, and that's just gonna be one. So we're gonna have 0 0.1 times 70 point, oops, 70.906, and we're gonna divide it by one. That will give us the number 7906 I still only want two decimals right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and say one, two. This is my second decimal. I'm gonna look over to see if I need to round up. Zero does not make me round up, which means that my final answer will be 7.09 with a unit that I stated I wanted in the beginning. It says X grams of chlorine, so this is going to be 7.09 grams chlorine. And that's going to be it. I'm going to go ahead and box that answer. And that's all.